A veterinary surgeon is someone who's completed additional training beyond veterinary school, usually uh, an internship and a residency, so you're talking at least four more years after veterinary school to get this extra training to be able to do the more complicated and difficult surgical procedures that a veterinarian in general practice would usually not want to get involved in, so that's where we step in. Today we're doing a surgery that's very common for orthopedic uh, surgeons in veterinary medicine, and that's repairing a dog's knee that has a torn ligament. Madison is our patient today, and she tore her anterior cruciate ligament. This is a very common problem for our veterinary patients. What we're gonna do today is a surgery to correct the instability that's resulted from the torn ligament. For me, the, the greatest part of what I do is that I'm able to work with the dogs and cats. Um, I enjoy being able to help them. They depend on us, they trust us, and I like to return that trust by helping them in any way I can. That's where I get my greatest pleasure is, is when my patients go home feeling better. The other part of my job that's very special to me is that I'm in a position to take my own dog, Annie, with me and have her be with me everywhere I go, including in the surgery room. She's asleep in the corner while I'm doing my procedures. She's at the patient's cage when they're waking up and she consoles them. She's my little adopted chocolate lab. She's about 11 years old now and she's had a rough background, but I found her about five years ago and ever since then she's been my best friend. As a neurologist, the type of cases that we see are animals that have seizures or animals that are having trouble walking. So those are probably about 90% of what they come in through the door. So seizures, personality changes, uh, weakness, knuckling or scuffing of the back limbs. And then as a neurologist, once we figure out what's wrong with that animal, whether it needs back surgery or brain surgery or whether it has meningitis or encephalitis, as a neurologist, I can help take them into that the treatment of those diseases, which is often a little beyond what most general practitioners want to get involved with. Being a neurologist, my favorite tool that's available to us at MassFet is the MRI. We've got a new uh, 1.5 Tesla MR scanner that I think is, is pretty neat. The other diagnostic things that we have here are CT scan, ultrasound, um, video endoscopy, video otoscopy, the underwater treadmill, the physical therapy is a newer addition to veterinary medicine in the past five years and has been really the, the cherry on the sundae or you know just the icing on the cake for helping animals with um, post-operative rehabilitation. So those are some pretty neat things that we offer here. For our patients we can really offer anything that they would offer in a human oncology facility. We have radiation therapy, we have chemotherapy, and we have um, surgeons as well. So pretty much it's very similar to how people are treated for cancer. There are several types of cancers that are very responsive to chemotherapy. Lymphoma tends to be one of the more common cancers we see and that many of our patients will respond well and have a good quality of life. There's some cancers where we know a lot about, just like in people, there's a lot of cancers that we have very good success with chemotherapy and or radiation and as well as surgery. And then there's some where we don't know as much and so we get into more uh, the clinical trial type uh, treatments where we do participate in some studies. If they're open and available, we, we're able to provide that for our patients as well. The dogs and cats seem to tolerate chemotherapy much better than we do. A lot of that may be uh, related to the different dosing schemes that we use and um, our goals of, of our treatment. With radiation, um, we typically um, see similar side effects as, as we do in people with you know, the skin, um, some changes on the skin in different areas, but that's a very localized treatment. We tend not to see more systemic effects with radiation such as um, radiation sickness, nausea, vomiting, and things on that level. You know, it can be very difficult to make decisions about quality of life with our owners. There's always two parts to it. One is an objective part. As an oncologist, what can we offer these patients in terms of treatment or just in terms of symptom relief? Um, and people are looking for our honest opinions when it comes to where we think a patient is in the process. 
But there's also an emotional part to it as well, that we have become very close to our clients and we consider them to be part of our circle of family and friends and that we have to help them make very tough decisions. But I think that the one guiding principle is really looking at a patient's quality of life. And if their quality of life isn't there and we can't make it better, then we need to look at making some tough decisions. But if it is um, not there and there are things that we can do to make it better, then we can look to trying to make our patients more comfortable until we get to the point where we can. But it's a decision that we make together with our, our clients. And as tough as it is, it's because of the fact that um, we value quality of life and you know everybody loves the patient or the pet and that we need to make sure that we ensure a good quality of life for them.